Thank you for staying with us. Trinidad and Tobago ranks at number 14 for female leaders in the workplace. That's according to the new study by the International Labour Organization, which puts St. Lucia, Jamaica and Colombia at the very top, beating the U.S., U.K. and Canada. Here's our business reporter, Roger Dwarka, with tonight's Sea Business. The global trend in having more females at the upper end of the business spectrum has been increasing over the years, with more organizations actively seeking the best female candidates for the boardroom or as leaders of business. However, according to a new ILO study, Jamaica leads where just under 60% of all managers are women. At position number two is Colombia with 53% and interestingly enough, the United States falls under Trinidad and Tobago who has just 43% versus 42% of female managers in the US. We have to be a little more aggressive, we have to make our presence felt, we have to be willing to do the things that um, require us to be outside there, go out to the network functions. Um, often I may get invitations and I'm unable to make it to go out to dinner or night functions and I'll ask some of the other managers who are women and often the word comes back with no, they can't make it. How else are they going to go and meet new people if they don't go out to network? That's the leader of the local Chamber of Commerce who's been a long-time advocate for more women leaders in the boardroom. Internationally, the trend for first world developing countries sees the UK ranked at 49, Canada tying with this country. In 2011, Jill Layfield was named as CEO of online retail giant Backcountry.com and she recently gave a special TED talk on women in business, giving her key tips on how to be a top female leader. So I think highly competitive is good. I mean be competitive. I believe that people want to follow leaders that want to win. And if you want to win and you are competitive, then people will get behind you and they'll want you to win and they'll want the organization to win. Jill lays out other tips, including be transparent, obsess over your work, and remember EQ is better than IQ, i.e. use emotional intelligence. Returning to the ILO report, there's still a skewed line here, which shows whilst women are more likely to own or operate a business than ever before, they're extremely unlikely to hold a position at some of the world's largest companies. According to the report, and I quote, the larger the company, the less likely the head will be a woman. However, a Harvard Business Review study showed a business group's collective IQ went up when there were more women on the team. And yet, only 12 of the Fortune 500 companies are run by women. So what are the other 488 missing out on? Communication. Firms with more women on their boards have 42% higher sales returns, 66% higher return on invested capital, and 53% higher return on equity. Take Yahoo's new CEO, Marissa Meyer, who laid out a strategic outline for the declining company and watched the stock gain 5.7%, closing at $16.67, its highest level in over a year. However, the ILO and other studies show there's still a way to go for gender equity among board members around the globe. Only one country, Norway, had more than 30% of all board seats being held by women.